know COVID is a crazy time. And as we uh, go up to the red level here in the area we live, uh, that's not a red in representative of the lockdown, that's red and green for Christmas behind me. But uh, not even sure if we're gonna be able to, in a week or two, uh, know whether you can celebrate uh, on a very large level or not the birthday of Jesus. But I wanna just look at going forward in your life. I, I know there's a very different Christmas season. I know the very different things are upon us. I know for our, our church with uh, Pastor Smith and praying and the things that we've been going through, even personally as a family, I wanted to take a few minutes uh, and let you into a uh, conversation on just this week on prayer. And why I wanna talk about prayer, I talked about prayer in the morning message this morning at, in person on the live stream. Uh, and then I would like to talk about it a little bit tonight. Our attitude towards prayer can have an enormous effect on our world and our life right now. And a lot, a lot of times we look at the world and we look at the things that are going inside of us or then uh, sometimes we look at them, well, maybe I have control over what are in me, but I don't have any control over the things around the world in terms of uh, even just things outside of my reach, people in their lives around me. And what we're told is prayer is an effective uh, way to see the kingdom of God uh, come in other people's lives as well as myself. There's this phrase in the Bible called intercession. It's kind of an old fashioned word. I don't really like using it in some ways. It just means to pray for other people. It's literally what it means. Interceding, you can intercede for a group of people or another person. But I wanna talk a little bit about prayer. We're gonna look at just a couple things. To be effective in praying, what does it take? First of all, you've gotta be directed and empowered by the Holy Spirit. So number one, be directed and empowered by the Holy Spirit. And number two, that the Word of God and the Holy Spirit in prayer, they work together. We looked uh, earlier today in the in-person service at uh, some instances of this. Elijah, it says in James chapter 5, verse 17, was a man just like us, it says, but he prayed for three years and six months and there was no rain. Now that's power. Um, to think that you could pray and, and see God move in a way that it just stops the rain. That's an incredible thing. And that's not an Old Testament thing it's talking here. It's an Old Testament example, but it's in the New Testament of this incredible time where Elijah's prayers, as he prayed, the people of Israel weren't serving God. But what was his secret or on what was his prayer based? Well, what's interesting is I don't think you'd pick this up necessarily unless you were kind of knowing the scripture. It says in Deuteronomy, Moses said, beware yet, uh, yet your hearts be deceived and you follow other gods. And if you do that, it says it won't rain. So Elijah obviously read his Bible. He was a part of reading the word of God and he knew that if the people of Israel were disobedient, then there was this ability that came through the promise of scripture that you could have a time. Now, no one really wants that for other people, but he just, he knew it. He saw it, it was something that he could do. And then it also says in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 35, Solomon at the dedication of the temple says, and if the people uh, cause a situation by following other guys where it doesn't rain, when they turn back, Solomon says, then it will rain. So here's Elijah and he's like, okay, he didn't in his mind just assume anything about what could happen when he was trying to bring Israel back to serving God. He just read in the Bible, my guess is the Holy Spirit prompted him or somehow he knew when he read it that he saw something in there. And in seeing what was in the scripture, it says, when the heavens shut up and there is no rain, Solomon said, when that happens, if they return, it will rain. So he played his part, Elijah. He didn't write the Bible, but he prayed it. So I wanna just, it's interesting. It's interesting how a guy in the Bible who the Bible is a collection of people in their real lives, real people. A guy in the Bible, Elijah, he had a book of the Bible written about him, but he then used another older book to kind of make his prayers effective. That's really amazing. And what you wanna realize is you don't wanna be swerving in your belief towards the Word of God. The Word of God has stuff in it that are true promises for today. And as you receive those promises, you can really sometimes get backed into a corner or in, in the world in which we live, it can be very threatening in COVID or what do I do in a lockdown? Or uh, One of the things you wanna realize is 
the Holy Spirit directs and empowers your prayers if they're going to be effective and then the Word of God and the Holy Spirit work together. The Word of God really is the authority uh, aspect or arm of what God has for you and then the Holy Spirit kind of twigs it and you definitely want to pray it. Now just a couple little points about praying. Number one, Elijah obviously had to last in his prayer. He wasn't cut off three and a half years of praying that it didn't rain. That's a long time of prayer. And then the minute it did rain, it has this amazing story how Elijah goes up on a mountain and when he goes up on the mountain, he starts to pray in his individual personal life. He kind of bent down and took this unique posture and then this tiny cloud the sign of a fist after seven times he went back and forth back and forth sent a servant this cloud pops up and there it appears and then the sign of the cloud the beginning of it uh, started this huge rain so there's authority in the promises of God and the authority and the promises of God they're effective for you as the Holy Spirit it's not that we ever want to belittle the Word of God but you want to believe the promises that are in there and then through kind of the Holy Spirit unction, as some more people call it, or another phrase would be a propulsion of the Holy Spirit. It's a twigging of some kind. Just even a still small voice, you're reading a scripture verse and it kind of jumps out. There's different ways the Lord takes these promises and makes them not effective for you, but makes them known to you. Then you have to believe in your heart and pray in faith. Easy to do that quickly, not so easy as it lasts a long time. So Elijah was a guy who, uh, he, he didn't live in the day of COVID, but he lived in the day of a drought that he then caused by his prayers. So as he received that promise from the word of God, he prayed it and that three and a half years, it lasted three and a half years. And then he had to pray to reverse it. So it's something that, you know, you really want to look at the Bible and see it in the way that God wants you to see it. When God's work word and spirit work together in our prayers the same power works through us and it's very important to say that you see it in psalm 33 6 it talks about the creative power that formed the universe was the word of god and the breath of god so just remember the breath is the holy spirit the wind ruach is the name in hebrew of spirit and it's it literally means breathing out so the word is carried on the breath the Word of God moves on the Holy Spirit. So you can have people who kind of take things in the Bible, they just want this to happen or that. The Holy Spirit's not breathing it. So you really have to quiet myself and yourself down. Easy to do in easy times, not so easy to do in tough times. And listen very intently to the promise that God is speaking into your heart. And there'll be other people around you that he might also do the same kind of, he might let them know or you know or however he does it. I'm just wanting to get to a very quick realization that prayer is a motivator for the, 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 the kind of the, the, um, the word of God and the Holy Spirit pushes it. Those promises, as you receive them, there's, there's an instigator of the Holy Spirit. So they're directed and empowered by the Holy Spirit, often involve an element that comes out of the scripture. Now, this, you look at the Bible and you see all kinds of amazing uh, times in the Bible which are you know not that far off uh, some of them like we live in a time maybe not that far off from some of the dire times in the scripture so it's not about a, how you perform well uh, under these times that maybe matters you want to see what's in your heart and let God help you but I would just suggest have faith in what God says to you in these times so you need to trust the authority of God's Word and you need to have faith in what God says to you. And I think that's really important to say, are you having faith in what God says to you now? Or if God has spoken a promise to you, are you having faith that, that God is gonna see those promises through? So have faith in what God says to you now. It's an amazing thing to see uh, these promises, they, they come from scripture, but you, you then also have to have faith to see them happen at what God says to you. So, you know, there's a Bible verse that says, resist the devil and he will flee. It's not just that the devil's gonna flee because you're a Christian, you have to actively resist him. It's a similar process with faith. There has to be an active embracing, an active believing, an active wrestling. 
And that is, it's not a curious thing, it's an amazing thing. So you don't want to stand on the sideline and say, well, is it going to work or not? And then when somebody else pulls it off, you jump in, you want to get in there. You want to have an attitude in your heart that you're part of it. Faith is always something you're part of, especially these things that God performs in the scripture. You've got to uh, activate your prayers and the belief in the word of God. I went through a wild week, as some of you know, and you know it's easy to kind of preach these things from afar, but in times of COVID or times of crisis or times of difficult days, you, you see this parameter in the Bible. You're not just getting guided by your own thoughts. The Holy Spirit guides you. The Word of God grounds you. The Holy Spirit grabs you. And the Word of God is kind of somehow propelling you towards a promise of some sort. You want to definitely act in faith then towards those things that God is saying to you. So if you're dealing with something right now, why don't you just say amen in your heart? I'm not going to go a long time tonight. Just let's look at this and say, okay, is there something I'm facing? Just say it right now. Amen. God, I say amen to this. And then what you want to do is receive the promises or receive the things God's having you believe for and then, and then act in faith in your heart. I would mentioned a few weeks ago, Thanksgiving in the in the uh, not in the church but in your life as a christian thanksgiving not as a celebration of a holiday but as a as as an attitude that's biblically outlined thanksgiving and prayer often go together so it's like prayer and faith go together thanksgiving and faith go together you're never wanting to hurt people with your prayers you know uh, it says that every time in the new testament the apostle paul prayed for anyone he started by thanking god for them I read this list off a few weeks ago. Just to highlight it, I'll say it again. Almost invariably, when Paul prayed for people, he began by giving thanks for the very people he's praying for. Romans chapter 1, verse 8. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. Philippians 1, verse 3. Colossians 1, verse 3. 1 Thessalonians 1, verse 2. 2 Timothy 1, verse 3. You, there's thanks and then prayers. So we always want to be thankful for the people. We love the people that we're praying for. We're loving now, you may be praying for yourself, so this may not be totally applicable, but having a thankful heart often is the thing that triggers you to receiving what God wants you to have. And also having faith, especially if he's put some little promise in your heart. So I just want to recap. Accept the possibilities that God has for you through the promises of the word, what the Holy Spirit is triggering you. Have faith in your heart, and then also be thankful in the time in which you're doing it. Don't be angry or resistant. Be thankful. Now you look at it and say, what does this have to do with Christmas? Well, this is quite a Christmas. It's quite a season. We're literally going into a red zone tomorrow. So in the next few weeks, you might really need God's help in praying, in, 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 in your attitude, in your heart, just to enjoy the, the birth of Jesus. Probably a year to say, you know, it's not the same as it used to be, but I can pray. I can receive with thanksgiving what God has for me in store for me. And then if God puts something in your heart, have faith for what God wants to see happen in your situation. You want to say amen over that? God, we give you every situation that, uh, that we're dealing with. We want to have faith. We want to listen. We want to be hands-on in the app, uh, applying in our hearts to the purposes of God in our life. God, I, I pray that none of us would act too fast on things that we just feel, but God, we'd listen to you very carefully as you speak to us by your Holy Spirit. I pray as Elijah did that we would have the ability to see your power move in the circumstances that we're facing. And God, I pray that we would know that the same power of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God put together, it works in us and it works through us. I pray that we would know that. I pray that we would have faith in our heart to see what you have for our lives, I pray it would happen. Even in these next few weeks, even in a lockdown, may we not distance ourselves from hope and prayer and faith. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you today.